So this, uh, for the next hour, what I want to do is share uh, a couple of techniques. I'm going to first share a, a breathing technique. That's a Zen Buddhist reflecting mindfulness technique. And this technique, it can be used at any time uh, before or during the meditation I'm going to teach you, which is using the sacred mantras. Uh, and this particular mantra is something you really need to understand uh, how it came about. Um, the, the ceremony I'm going to do, which I got accused once of doing as if it's any accusation, a Hindu ceremony. Actually, it's not. it predates Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity. It's an ancient philosophical school. The whole ceremony is in Sanskrit, so you won't understand it unless you speak Sanskrit. And when I was uh, in my misspent youth, before I became a doctor, um, when other folks were doing drugs and rock and roll and chasing skirts, I was in becoming a meditation teacher and spending eight hours a day in meditation. and um, So when I was 19, 20, I became a teacher of meditation and bef became a deep student of the Vedas, as well as other traditions, um, Native American, chanting, uh, etc. Um, and this particular ceremony is beautiful because it's all in Sanskrit, which is a name and form language, which means that the words, the, the resonant tonality of the words f form and create the reality. And it's thought to be the root of all Indo-European languages by most linguists and uh, language experts. And you don't have to understand the words because really even though they do have meaning, it's more important to hear the resonant frequency of it. So in a sense, this puja, which is maybe 15 minutes, I don't know, I've never timed it, is almost, it's like one long mantra. At the end of which, I will actually give you this mantra you can meditate with. And then the mantra I'm gonna give you, and this is separate from the meditation, the, the breathing technique. The mantra is actually different from what I initially learned. It's an advanced technique. And about seven or eight, about eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, I was in Crestone, Colorado. And, you know, I had been learning, teaching and sharing this mantra for 40 years, almost, uh, 30 some years. And, ooh, I'm dating myself. Am I that old? I guess I am. And this was a, a profound experience where uh, I was, we were in the Zen meditation dome up in Crestone, up in the Sang Sangre de Cristo Mountains. And I went into this deep meditation and I led the group into the higher states of consciousness from deep transcendent consciousness and pure mind, samadhi, to cosmic consciousness, God consciousness, the unity state, uni unity consciousness, Brahman consciousness, all the way through. And it was really deep, and people had this amazing experience with it. And then afterwards, I went back to my condo to do the meditation privately before we went out under the stars till 3 a.m. And can you imagine doing this for a whole week? Pretty cool, huh? And I went into this deep state, and I went straight into the samadhi state. And as I emerged from the samadhi state, I don't know how much time longer, I went into uh, the, the point where the quiet and unbounded field of consciousness becomes the first fine relative aspect of creation. And at that juncture, I heard this tone, and it was musical, and it was three notes. And it was emerging out of this pure conscious field as the, uh, an early emanation, a, a, a resonant vibration. And it's the mantra I'm going to give you. And it, and it was a mantra that I've known for years. And I realized that it was, it's the correct mantra in terms of how it sounds, except that the tonality over the last few thousand years had been lost. Now, what do I mean by that? It's three syllables. And the way it had been taught to me and has been for a long time was dun, 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 
like all on a line. When in reality, as it emerged from this field of consciousness, it was da dum dum, da dum dum, da dum dum, da dum dum. The first syllable is a perfect fifth higher than the other two. Now, I'm not a musician, and I t certainly don't sing well, but that's what I heard. It was a perfect fifth higher than the other two. And so when you repeat and think the mantra, you need to understand that that's the correct use of it. And I didn't know that till 2007. It was effective without this knowledge, but with this knowledge it became enormously more effective. So this is the beginning of, of you sort of being, you know, entering into this knowledge tonight. Uh, as we go through the weekend, I will add other advanced techniques with this mantra. Because this mantra, because it is in this tonality, actually creates also a sort of triangular form, da, 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 as opposed to a straight line. So there's a geometric form that emerges from the tonality. Does this make sense to people? And you have to understand, a triangle is the first shape that encloses space for manifestation. And if you put a triangle into 3D, you have a tetrahedron. Then if you put the tetrahedron and replicate it, and join it at the base and merge them halfway between each other, you end up with a Merkaba, which I, unfortunately I don't have a big one, this. It looks spherical, but it's an eight-pointed star. And it's a Merkaba, or a double tetrahedron, very sacred. And I'm going to first teach you just to meditate with the mantra. And then if we have time over the weekend, I will teach you how to create a form from the mantra, a Merkaba from the mantra, and create a conscious astral uh, interstellar vehicle to travel in in consciousness with the Merkaba. Does this make sense to people? Yeah, okay. So that's all what happened on that 2007 expedition into the wilderness in, in Colorado. So that's what I'll be sharing. Now most people meditate incorrectly uh, because they're trying too hard. It should really be fun and easy if people get so serious and it's like Mantra, 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 you know, they're forcing it. No, that's not how you meditate. So what you really want to understand is the, the proper use of any meditative technique. And I'm not chauvinistic about this. In fact, you know, I'm sharing you techniques, and I actually there are dozens of techniques I could share if we had a whole week together or two weeks or a month. But I'm going to share, you know, you have to start somewhere, right? So I'm going to share the, this breathing technique, which is great to use, just before you begin the mantra. Why? Because the resonance of the breath, the prana, the chi, going in and out, is very soothing and awakening and enlivening. And then if you introduce the mantra after having done the breathing meditation, you're already in a deeper and quieter state of mind. Does this make sense? So that's a really powerful way of putting those two together, which is what we're going to do. Now, when you're using the mantra, instead of trying to force it, remember what I, I said, uh, and this is something that you know, Jerry was talking to me about in Colorado, uh, the difference between force and, and just power. If you're forcing it, it's actually counterproductive. But if it's being emerging from within in a relaxed way, and your mind is just going and lightly focused on the mantra, you can then let your mind settle on it where you become more and more aware of the conscious mind that's thinking the mantra. And if you practice this for enough months and years, the mantra runs by itself, and you just allow it to be something the mind gently connects to, and you enter into this deep, quiet, pure state of mind. Your blood pressure goes down, all this happens. I mean, amazing things happen. You become very centered and calm, 
the key is not to try to force the mantra when you're thinking. And you can think it at any speed or loudness. When you, you never speak this mantra. You, know, you never give it to utterance. I'll speak it because otherwise you don't know what it is. <laughs> I'll speak it and I'll spell it and I'll do the whole thing so you have it precisely because I want you to have it precisely. But I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to ask you not to then speak it overtly because it brings it out into sort of a coarsening of it. You want to keep it as a, a thought sound. It's, it, and it is. It's the sound component of thought. And so this particular thought and sound, when used in a gentle way of lightly focusing, it allows your mind to become centered, calm. And if you find yourself while you're using it distracted, which everyone does, I don't care who you are, by other sounds, thoughts, perceptions, most people get irritated, their egos and intellect then try pushing out those stimuli and those perceptions, which is counterproductive. It brings the mind back to a very superficial level of, again, forced and egotism and irritation as opposed to holism and transcendence into quietness. Does that make sense? So if you have a sound, if you're distracted by anything, you find you're not using the mantra anymore and, it, and you're off thinking about uh, breakfast or going to bed or whatever, just acknowledge that thought or perception and then return to the mantra gently. So it's this back and forth process that's gentle as opposed to forced. Does this make sense? And, it's, and don't feel like, oh, I'm not doing it right because I started thinking about my cat at home. That's fine. Think about your cat at home. And then return to the mantra, thinking very gently, and you'll make it distracted again. And you return to it. And you just keep returning to it. What's really key also is that as the mantra is being focused on, lightly focused, gently focused, you become aware of the mind watching the mantra. Same thing with the breath when you're doing the breathing meditation. And as you become aware of the mind, allow the mind to, to see the mantra being repeated, but increasingly connect to the mind watching the mind and let the mantra just be a soothing tone that allows you to stay focused on that. Does this make sense? It's, it's a very new, it's like riding a bicycle the first time. You can be a little, but once you learn this, it's really fantastic. At some point, you may find yourself not having the mantra and not having any thoughts, and you're just aware of the mind. That is the experience of pure consciousness. It may be very subtle initially, and then eventually it will be something where you have a deeper and wider and more infinite experience with it. But it may first be just the experience of the space between the thoughts and the space between the perceptions, where it's this beautiful state of perfect calmness and awakeness and yet nothingness. It's, it, it is that beatific state. But it, it can dawn very gently and subtly. So in a sense, any meditation technique, objective, is for the technique to stop and you find yourself in the unbounded quiet state. So that's the other art to this, is not to hold on and force the mantra too strongly, because really what your objective is, is to allow the mind to connect to the mantra and then find yourself in this quiet ocean of awareness. Is this, is this, I'm trying to be clear about this to the extent words convey it. Of course, experience is the great teacher, and that's why we want to do that tonight. Each morning, I recommend you take half an hour to an hour to practice the breathing technique and the meditation. And then in the morning, we don't have a session, so you can play in the pools and begin to practice remote viewing. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to go through a whole bunch of techniques for remote viewing and how the, and the description of how it works, so you can take that home with you. But we want to start tonight with giving you this technique, these well, two techniques, the breathing and the the mantra. When we're doing the, the meditation, which we'll, tonight we'll do maybe a 10, 15 minute group meditation, it's really best to do it before 
you've had any kind of stimulants like coffee or a big meal. So in the morning when you awaken, you know, you may want to just wash up and have a piece of fruit or something and then meditate, but don't have, you know, like a, you know, a gallon of coffee because you're going to get zzz. And same thing in the, in the evening, you sort of want to do it when, you know, without having just eaten. Um, it also helps a great deal if you do it in the same general time of day to get into your own rhythm if you do it two, three times, and if you're at home, to do it in the same place. Why is that? Because you actually create in your own a signature in space-time that's conscious, that activates the so-called embedded Akashic record that you are writing, and it creates a power spot. And this is why you can go into places where a great deal of meditation or deep spirituality is, and you can feel it. Or you can go someplace and feel where terrible things have happened and feel it. So it does help if you do it with, and you get into, some, into a place. And you, you don't have to have a meditation room. It can just maybe be a corner of your room or a place where you do this on a regular basis and it creates uh, its own deep meditative feeling that makes it easier, facilitates going into the quiet meditative state. That's something I suggest. Now, it doesn't matter if you're traveling. I travel 120,000 miles a year. I just do it wherever I am. But I'm just saying if you're at home, it's great to, to, to do that. The other thing is you don't have to be in a sound deprivation chamber to do this. You can be sitting on a subway and do it once you practice it enough where you're going into quiet awareness. But the key is don't let the distractions of the sound be something you're fighting. If you're getting into a tug of war with thoughts and sounds and perceptions and what have you, then you're tied up on that level of the superficial mind and the monkey mind, the intellect. If you're wanting to go into transcendent, unbounded consciousness, it's, you really have to let go of all that and just let it flow and don't be irritated by it. In fact, what I've learned to do, very good technique, is as soon as there's a stimulus that, that is moving you out of the meditative state, allow you the, the, whatever the perception is to remind you that you're conscious and the awake mind is perceiving that stimulus, even if it's someone screaming at the top of their lungs. Does this make sense? So you're then reconnecting to the quiet mind that is the singularity even as you're perceiving the distraction. In this sense, if you learn doing to do that, your whole life becomes awake, dreaming, sleeping, a, a continuous meditative state. Because you become accustomed to letting anything that's happening be an opportunity to connect to how it is you're perceiving it. And that is, you're just perceiving it because you're conscious. And that consciousness is always within you. And if you, you, you look at it that way, then whatever is, is uh, a, stem, a perception or, or pulling you out of what your, your practice is, it's not something that's a barrier at all. It just becomes something that enables you to become aware of it, become aware the mind has been perceiving it, and then return to the meditation technique to go more deeply into quietness. A lot of it is attitudinal. What is your attitude towards things that most people would say, I'm being distracted by this thought or this sound? So I'm trying to say, don't take an oppositional attitude. Take a relaxed, integrative, accepting attitude. And uh, just relax and enjoy it. Does that, does that make people understand? This is a, it, it's, a, it's nuanced, it's subtle. What I want to do first is to, to help uh, folks center is give you this breathing technique. And um, this is actually a, a Zen uh, Buddhist technique. And uh, Jack Kornfield and others have, have shared that it's a beautiful approach. And it actually is for mindfulness meditation. So if you can sit and put things out of your lap and just relax.
And let's close our eyes. And let us sit quietly together. And as we sit quietly, let us breathe in deeply with our nose and exhale with our mouth. Very deeply with our nose and exhale with our mouth. And keep doing this, and as you breathe in with your nose, see energy, chi, prana, filling your body and awakening the mind. And it is building like you are charging the light of consciousness within and in your third eye. And you see that your conscious mind is expanding and awakening as you breathe. And that breath is going through every cell of your body from your toes to your head, carrying this light and energy of the life force, prana, chi, conscious breath. And then as you exhale, relax and release into the breath of Mother Earth all of your concerns and limitations. And with each inward breath, you are more awake and enlivened. And with each exhalation, you become relaxed and centered and you let go of all limitations, all concerns, and feel peace within. So let us do this for a couple more moments. Now very gently begin to breathe normally. But continue to watch the breath. And with each inward breath and outward breath, you become awakened and relaxed, centered and calm. And now very gently become aware of the mind watching the breath. See that you are conscious and this consciousness is changeless. Watching the breath, hearing the sounds, seeing the self, your individuality. But this field of consciousness doesn't change. It is a steady field of pure, undifferentiated, awake mind. And the breath comes and goes. And sounds come and go. Thoughts arise and fall and pass through us. But our true self is this quiet, pure mind that is in fact changeless, that perceives all and yet is bound by none. So all that we perceive, including our own individual selves, are 
permeated by this infinite light of consciousness, this field that is unbounded and unlimited in space or time, and that is always shining within each of us, and in fact, within all things. And so let us quietly go into this ocean of unbounded mind, And let us dive into its quietness. We perceive our breath now as if from afar. And we are deep in this quiet and infinite space, watching the breath, perceiving our bodies, our thoughts. And now we sense that every person in this room is awake and the awakeness, the essence of the mind, is in fact one. It is a singularity. And we can feel and sense the calmness of perceiving reality from this unitive state, quiet within. And the light of consciousness now we realize is infinite, like the depths of an infinite ocean, silent, calm. And on the surface of this ocean are many waves and ripples that emerge in relativity. But at the heart of this infinite ocean of consciousness, is this centered, quiet place of the placeless, pure, awake mind. And thus in this state, as we shortly will introduce the mantra, you can then go more deeply into this quiet field until all things vanish and the perception is only of consciousness itself. The mind enfolded watching the mind. And it is pure joy and bliss, freedom, infinite peace a state of great repose and beauty that is beyond space, time, matter, or even individual self. And this is our true self. Now, let us slowly open our eyes. And even though we have been in infinity together, affirm to yourself you can remain in this state of quiet, infinite awareness or a sense of it as you open your eyes and look around. And realize that all that you perceive in reality is pure consciousness resonating as space and time, matter, this room, your body. And that is the truth. All of this is that. So that's a relaxing and centering breathing meditation. You can use that for 5, 10, 20 minutes, as, as whatever you feel comfortable. And then you can then go into introducing the mantra, either within that state 
or you can do that as a med standalone meditation. It's very powerful. Everybody understand that process? Starting out deep breathing in and out, in with the nose, out with the mouth. Inwardly, you're energizing and visualizing the prana, the chi, the life force that is within breath, going deep within yourself. And your exhalations, you center and become calm and release. Each breath you're releasing and going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the calm state. And we're letting go of your limitations and concerns and becoming more relaxed. And you just keep doing this with each breath. Each breath of your life then becomes a meditation that you can be aware of. So that mindfulness meditation using the breath is a very ancient technique. And there are literally hundreds of uh, what are called pranayam uh, techniques using the breath and prana. And um, if we have time this weekend, I'll teach you another one that's also very effective. Everybody understand that one? Okay. So what we're going to do now is stand and we're going to do a puja. It's traditional to stand. I'm going to take my shoes off. You don't have to, but it's... <coughs> Boy, these boots. I've had these for 50 years. I love them because they have the Akashic record of every place I've been. <laughs> the Pentagon, the CIA, interstellar reality. So if you'd like to come forward. So this, this ceremony is a very beautiful, um, melodic uh, ceremony that brings pure consciousness into this dimension and is a blessing. And it's actually a, um, in a sense, an invocation to connect to that divine state within all of us. But it's also an honoring of the tradition of enlightened beings that have brought the knowledge of consciousness to earth for millions of years, all the way back to the interstellars. And I personally think that the Sanskrit and this, this tradition is the remnants of the last golden era on earth which had open and continuous contact with interstellar civilizations that were highly enlightened. That's my own experience with it. Um, so uh, we'll have an assistant here, come on up. You can take, uh, <clears throat> this can come off, this Vivitech, whatever this is, it was, uh, just so the, the people running this, um, during the breaks, we were going to have video and before people, before we start our lecture, and it didn't get done, but we'll do it uh, next time. So I will just sort of briefly brief you on, there are things that, that I'm, th these are the ascended masters. There, there's rice and water and sandalwood paste, flowers, camphor, candles, light. And it's all very traditional, and there's a lot of symbology but don't concern yourself. I'll do this puja, um, and you, you can just you can have it do it with your eyes open or closed. You can watch or not watch. It doesn't matter. But get into the feeling of the resonance of the Sanskrit tonality and the words and the chanting, and and you'll be able to understand. So I don't know if a technician wants to set up this thing. So uh, the technical folks, hello. This stand needs to be here so I can put, I can't do the push and hold this. Remember? Or, well, we had a discussion earlier, but it was forgotten. But hopefully someone will appear. Oh good, someone has materialized. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I'm very, uh, I, I like going through the, ch I don't know. Here, put it and see. <laughs> you tell me. I can't touch it because I have to do all this. Can folks hear? Oh. Is that good? Yeah. Can folks hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Wonderful. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not turning my back to you to be rude, but you're, we're all facing the, uh, the, the ascended masters and honoring them. Now, after this puja, you can be seated, and I will, you will have to close your eyes, and I will share the mantra that I was describing earlier. Okay? So. So. 
if you want to be here, and you'll probably have to hold it so I can see it. Hmm. No, it's way too far. I do not need reading glasses, so it needs to be like in that distance. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm going to light. Hopefully, there are no fire <laughs> detectors right nearby or smoke detectors. This is incense. The sandalwood incense is the traditional. Isn't this fun? I love doing this out in the wilderness. But we'll do it in here tonight. Oh, does somebody had the Orion transmission sphere, the crystal? Do you still have it? I gave it to somebody. It was a, somebody absconded. <laughs> Thank you. I, there are some things I put on here that are not traditional, but I don't think the masters mind. And if they do, they'll get over it. <laughs> okay. All right, so let us center ourselves in the quiet state and be grateful for the life we have. And this puja is dedicated to opening the era of universal peace. Apavitra, pavitrova, sarva vastanga topiva. Yas mare pundari kaksham sabaya biantara sushi avahanam Narayanam padma bhavam vashishtam shaktim shatat putra param characha vyasam shukam gora padam mahantam govinda yogindra matasha shisham shri shankaracharya matasha padma Padam chahasta malakam chashisham Tam troti kam vartika karumanyan Asmad gurun santatamana tosmi Shruti shmirti purananam Alayam karun alayam Namami bhagavat padam Shankaram loka shankaram Shankaram shankaracharyam Keshavam badarayanam Sutra Basha Krito Vande Bhagavanto Puna Puna Yadvare Nikila Nalim Paparishat Sidhim Virate Nisham Shrima Shri Lasitam Jagad Guru Padam Natvat Ma Triptim Gata Loka Gyan Payot Patandaram Shri Shankaram Sharamadam Brahmanadam Sarvatim Guru Varam Dhyayami joy tir mayam. Avahanam samarpami shri guru charan kamale pio nama. Asanam samarpami shri guru charan kamale pio nama. Snanam samarpami shri guru charan kamale pio nama. Vastram samarpami shri guru charan kamale pio nama. Chandanam Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama Ashkatan Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama Pushpam Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama Dupam Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama Deepam Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama Akshmaniyam Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama 
Nai be jam samar pami shri guru charan kamale bio nama akshmani yam samar pami shri guru charan kamale bio nama tambulam samar pami shri guru charan kamale bio nama shri palam samar pami shri guru charan kamale bio nama Arartikyam Karpur Karam Karunavataram Samsara Saram Bujagendra Haram Sarava Santam Ridayara Vinde Bavam Bavani Sahitam Namami Arartikyam Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama Akshmaniyam Samarpami Shri Guru Charan Kamale Pio Nama Apushpanjalim Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Akanda Mandala Karam Vyaktam yeno characharam, tat padam darshitam yeno, tasmai shri gurave nama, shri brahmanadam param sukaram, kevalam gyan murtim, vishvatitam gagan sadrisham, tat vamatashilaksham, ekam nipilam vimalamachalam, sarvadi sakshi bhutam, bhavatitam triguna sahitam, Sadgurum tam namami Agyan temelian dasya Gyananjan shalakaya Chakshurunamitom yeno Tasmai shri gurave nama Pushpanjalim samarpami shri guru charan kamale pio nama Now let us be seated in silent meditation. So let us close our eyes. our minds enlivened with the sacredness of the ancient puja. Let us take some deep cleansing breaths again in with our nose and out with our mouth. So we connect back to that quiet place within. And now as we breathe normally, watching the breath, we connect to the awake mind, watching the breath, hearing the sounds, perceiving ourself 
and our thoughts. And we affirm that that conscious mind is infinite, unbounded, a field of endless, pure consciousness. And that is the nature of our very own consciousness, always. Being thus reminded of our true nature, we listen as I share the mantra, which consists of three syllables. And the first syllable is a perfect fifth, higher in tonality than the other two. And we always just think this mantra gently and allowing it to be a focus without straining or force so the mind becomes centered and pure and quiet and calm. And so listen carefully as I repeat the mantra. I'm Nama, 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 I'm Nama. The first syllable is I am, M as in mother, I'm. The second syllable is Na, N as in Nancy, A. The third syllable is ma, m as in mother, a h. And the first syllable is the perfect fifth, higher in tonality than the other two. And so think it quietly without speaking it as I repeat it over and over again. Just follow it in your thought. I'm Nama, 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 I'm Nama. Now think it more gently and softly. I'm Nama, I'm Nama, I'm Nama, I'm Nama, I'm Nama, I'm Nama. And so now, allow yourself just to think the mantra without straining, just repeating it at any speed, any loudness in thought, softly, whatever it spontaneously feels comfortable. And as you think the mantra, become aware of the mind that is watching it. And because of the tonality, see that it is like a musical note that can just repeat over and over and over effortlessly. And the tonality, like a tone or a note of music, just repeats over and over. And that allows the mind to be centered and calm as it takes you deeper and deeper into quiet, the unbounded, the ocean of pure consciousness. If at any point you become distracted with thoughts or sounds, do not fight them. Just return to thinking the mantra and observing the mind, watching the mantra as you go more and more deeply into quietness and peace. Until you just let go of all perceptions and enter into the unbounded, transcendent state a pure consciousness. So let us sit together in silence and practice this for a few moments.
now while remaining in this quiet space. Allow the mantra to transform into a tetrahedron. And each time you repeat the mantra, a triangle is formed. I'm Nama. I'm Nama. I'm Nama. And this three sided triangle with a triangular base is a tetrahedron. And see that it is golden, shimmering awake. It is a consciousness created astral spacecraft. And then as we repeat the mantra three more times, we create another tetrahedron with the point facing downward or opposite of the first one. I'm Nama. I'm Nama. I'm Nama. And let us rotate that one and put it halfway within the first tetrahedron. And we see an eight pointed spherical a Merkaba, a double imposed tetrahedron. And we center our consciousness within the very center point of this tetra, double tetrahedron. And we empower it with pure cosmic consciousness. And we visualize it in the center of our forehead expanding And in inner space, it expands to any size we wish it to be. And we travel within the resonant field of this sacred form created by the tonality of the mantra. And so we expand our awareness with this mantra and the Merkaba, and we rise upward through the ceiling of this room, and we effortlessly gaze at this hotel with all of us in it meditating. And then we go upward into the sky above Mother Earth, and we see the beauty of the valley scintillating in the darkness of night. And we see to our east the vast wilderness of Joshua Tree National Park. And to our west, over the mountains, the large cities of Los Angeles and Orange County and San Diego. And as we go upward, we behold Father Sky embracing Mother Earth, who is conscious and awake. And as we rise upward a few hundred thousand feet, we see the Earth, this beautiful blue sphere floating in space, and we see it with celestial perception, the astral body of Earth And we sense her love for us and our love for her, the life she gives us. And she is a conscious being, albeit not human. And she is asking us for her help to lift the burden we have placed upon her. And we answer that we shall. And as we gaze outward now into space, 
we see the vastness of the cosmos. And effortlessly we rise upward and go out past the moon. And on the other side of the moon that is lit are vast extraterrestrial spacecraft that are present many miles across. And we welcome them here to assist us in the mission to planet Earth and humanity for its healing and enlightenment. And as we expand our awareness further, traveling in the sacred Merkaba, we see the other planets of the solar system. And out by the rings of Saturn, an enormous interstellar facility. And we welcome them to enter this meditation with us as we bless the earth and her children and see a time expanding into the future for half a million years of unbroken universal peace and enlightenment and harmony on earth and in space. And as we expand our Merkaba and our awareness further, effortlessly we go out of our solar system and our sun and the earth are specks in the distance. And we behold the vastness of interstellar space, which like all points in space and time are filled with this pure consciousness. And it is not empty, but it is teeming with awareness and other dimensions folded within every point of space and time into the worlds of light and astral splendor and thought and the Empyrean realm of knowledge and ideas and thence into infinity. And so now we behold the beautiful Milky Way as we go beyond the Milky Way galaxy and we see a spiral galaxy which we call the Milky Way, with about a hundred billion star systems. And there are billions of intense, living, present civilizations just in this galaxy. And we see the intensity of their light and feel their consciousness. And just as we sense the awareness of Earth, we sense the awareness of these civilizations and we see we are one in pure consciousness with them. And as we go further into intergalactic space, we apprehend the consciousness of the galactic being for the galaxy has an aggregate consciousness and we sense it and are awestruck. And then as we travel further into intergalactic space, we perceive the Andromeda galaxy 2.5 million years from Earth, light years from Earth. And it is like a twin galaxy to the Milky Way. And it too has billions of civilizations awake and we sense the consciousness, an infinite fractal manifesting life. And then we expand and behold the entirety of the cosmos, which has no beginning in time or space. And even the material cosmos is in fact infinite. And where we, what we perceive is one universe let self, there is vastness of space and an other universes begin. And it has no limit in space or time. And then we transcend 
space and time and galaxies and perceive the worlds of astral splendor. And we see that those worlds are peopled with light beings beyond space and time and matter. And it too is an infinite cosmos folded within consciousness. And so it goes on forever into the cosmos of pure thought forms and piercing the form of all light, the emanation of the primal light, the first light of existence. We perceive the primal tone emanating from unbounded pure consciousness. And this primal thought has folded within it the resonant tone and frequency of all that exists, all that will exist, all that has existed in a most beautiful tone. And this is the song of the cosmos. And then we realize that all of this, every galaxy and every star, every dimension and every realm is folded within the pure consciousness that is within each of us indivisible and in its totality and we are filled with joy as we perceive this knowledge and in this state as emissaries in consciousness, together, we scan the universe. And as we see worlds and people and starships, whatever comes into our mind, we accept. And we sense their light of awareness. And we see that they are conscious even as we are. And in that light of consciousness, we see the foundation of universal peace. And we invite them to join us in this meditation and guide them to earth. And so we show them our home planet and our star, the sun, on one of the outer spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy. And as we zoom into our solar system effortlessly in our beautiful Merkaba of light, we show them Earth, a conscious living being. And we ask them to join us as we see the Earth bathed in healing light and comfort and compassion and love. And then we sense the seven billion children of Earth and all her creatures, plants and animals. And we send the light of this cosmic light into each and every heart and all the life of the Earth. And we ask the great being to guide humanity. And no matter how powerful or how humble, every heart and consciousness on earth is filled with this vision and a new light, a beautiful vision of a new civilization on earth. And we ask these interstellar civilizations, as well as these supernal and celestial realms to join us here and we guide them to this place and as we draw closer to the earth we show them the west coast or wherever you are via the internet wherever you live and we show them the valley 
where Palm Springs and Desert Hot Springs is located. And then we show them this hotel and we show them this room. And we ask them to be here in any way, in any form that is safe and appropriate for this time and place. And invite them into our dream time to communicate with us that we may soar in the firmament of consciousness as easily as we do across the skies and ask them to be with us as ambassadors in consciousness and in body and self to their civilizations. And we do this for the purpose of awakening this knowledge within all of humanity that the time of universal peace has arrived and the dawning of a new civilization based on justice and on truth and enlightenment and abundance and peace. And in this spirit, we ask all of these civilizations to join us as they prepare and we prepare for this cosmic moment long foretold by all the ancient seers and wise ones on earth. Namaste. You may open your eyes when you're ready. Lovely. Did you have a nice journey? Well, in the interest of sanity, I will close this session. It's 11.15, we've gone about 15 minutes over, and I apologize for that, but I wanted to take you on a journey that I was uh, told that needed to happen tonight. And so just remember that, so tomorrow, Tonight as you go to bed, or actually, if you're on West Coast time, you can go into the hot tubs at night, the, the, the springs late, do the meditation, look up at the stars, and make contact using this protocol. And as you go into dream time, this is a very important technique. Ask this inner state, this great spirit that resides within all of us, to open your consciousness even as you are asleep, resting your body, and affirm that you can have lucid, clear knowledge and experiences within consciousness, with these interstellar civilizations, and with each other, even as you sleep. And this is the normal state of dream time, if we affirm it and empower it. And then, as you awaken tomorrow morning, get a good eight hours of sleep, and in the morning, do the meditation that I have shared with the mantra and the breathing, the breathing first and the mantra. And then at the end, when you're in deep meditation, practice this ascension into deep outer space, connecting to these and remote viewing these interstellar civilizations and inviting them here. And see what happens. And invite them into your meditation also. And practice that in the morning Take about 45 minutes total, if you are okay doing that. And then we will, uh, you'll have time in the morning also to enjoy the hot springs and just the beauty of the desert and lunch. And then at 1.30, we'll meet back here and do a series of remote viewing exercises to sharpen your ability to perceive distant places and times with consciousness. Everybody understand what the plan is? Wonderful. God bless you all. I will see you tomorrow after lunch. Enjoy your journey. Thank you.
It's time for the people to find the solution. And here it is, mass contact through consciousness. Citizens Diplomacy CE5. Shh.